Warren Buffett favorite market gauge known as the Buffett indicator is flashing red. It's currently at 182%, which suggests that US stocks are overpriced and in danger of plunging. In fact, Buffett indicator has peaked before each of the major US stock market crashes in recent history. Hello, this is Bini here. Today, I'm going to talk about whether there will be a stock market crash in 2023, which many people are predicting. But before this, if you would like to follow me in Telegram as well, you can scan this QR code. I'll be there updating in Telegram regularly on my stock ideas. Now, if you take a look into buffer indicator, there have been a number of studies that have examined the relationship between the buffer indicator and historical stock market crashes. These studies have found that the buffer indicator tends to peak before major stock market crashes. For example, the buffer indicator peaked at 175% in December 1999, just before the dot-com bubble burst. The indicator then fell to 77% in October 2002 after the market had crashed. No wonder there are so many predictions as such on US stock market crashed during 2023 near to the March-April period. While they were doing quantitative easing in 2021, uh, inflation started to rage and now they're trying to catch up. Our, Maria, our 21 Lehman systemic risk indicators that look at equity and credit point to the, one of the highest probabilities of a crash in the stock market looking out 60 days. Wow, 60 days? You're saying you're going to see it? We're, we're going to see a crash in the stock market within 60 days? I'm going to share with you exactly what is this buffer indicator, why it is pointing to every possible clue that the market is overpriced and in danger of crashing, but why the market is not crashing yet, in my opinion. What is the buffer indicator? This indicator takes the total market capitalization of all actively traded US stocks and divides it by the latest official estimate for quarterly GDP. It's a way to compare the overall value of the stock market to the size of the national economy. And while the stock market has been performing well this year, especially during the last three months, with the Wilshaw 5000 total market index jumping 22%, the Buffett indicator suggests that stocks may be overvalued because right now it is near to the high of that two standard deviation. You are able to get a reading of the latest Buffett indicator from currentmarketvaluation.com. This chart here is based on the July 28th reading and it's right now at 182% of market value to GDP, which is pointing to 1.6 standard deviation above the trend. How do we read this? What the indicator did is to draw in a historic trend line. So this is like the average value in the past and it's given by this gray line here. So that's the gray line. It will draw another two more lines above the historic trend line and that's the standard deviation, which shows the overvalue and the plus two standard deviation. At the bottom would be the minus one and minus two standard deviation and this will show that the market is undervalued. Now, if we correlate the various crashes to the Walt Buffett indicator, then we saw that during the 1968, whenever that indicator is near to the strongly overvalued at near to two standard deviation, the market had a correction. In fact, for in during 1960s, it's about a 30% average correction. Now, I want to bring out during the dot-com bubble crash, which happened during 2000 and the similarity right now. Now, during the dot-com bubble crash, the reading was at near to above 200%, which means that near to this red line, which is at the two test standard deviation. Now, we saw this happening again during the 2022, where there was an aggressive rate hike. And right now, standing at 182%, the current reading is very near to the two standard deviation. Have you clicked the subscribe button? And how about a like? Now, why do I think that the current setting is very similar to what happened during 2000 dot-com bubble burst? It's because of the interest rate. Now, during the 2000 period, we saw that based on this Fed fund effective rates, we have the rates, right, that's from 1997 all the way to about 2000. Similarity is that during the 1998s, we have the rates at about 5.5%, but there was a rate cut and it moved towards about 4%. However, from 1998 
to 2000. What happened was a period of rate height, aggressive rate height, I would think so, from 4% to about 6.5%, which was the peak during June 2000. Now remember, the dot-com bubble crash happened during the March 2000. What happened during early 1999 was that the Fed was gradually raising interest rate in response to a strong US economy driven by dot-com. There was also robust economic growth. The tightening of the monetary policy aimed to prevent overheating and maintain stable inflation level. And isn't this what we are seeing right now? The series of rate increase begin in mid-1999 and continued until mid-2000 to reach a peak at about 6.5% in June 2000. Now remember, the crash happened during March 2000 for the dot-com bubble. And then what happened before that? There was a series of rate hike and the reason for the rate hike is to combat against inflation. And this is exactly what we are seeing. On the other hand, despite the rising interest rate, the Nasdaq was just rocketing away. And this is exactly what we are seeing right now, that the Nasdaq, because driven by AI, is just going into sky high. With the buffer indicator at 182%, which is very near to the two standard deviation. But there's one thing I want to stress here, is that while it is not flawless, but however, whenever the buffer indicator hit that two standard deviation, that means it's at the strongly overvalued, for example, during 1968, and during the dot-com bubble, and during 2022, every time when it hit that plus two standard deviation, which is strongly overvalued, then it resulted in a stock market crash. 1968, a 37% crash, dot-com bubble 2000, a 38% crash, and during 2022, it went down about a 32% drop. Now, this is what I'm trying to say. There are times where there are stock market crashes, such as, for example, the Black Monday, then it doesn't point to a overvalue situation. Okay, yes, that resulted in a crash. But what I wanted to stress is that every time when it's at that last two standard deviation at 200% or near the 200%, it always resulted in a crash in the past. Well, we know that history doesn't predict the future, but it does tell us that right now the stocks is really a little bit more expensive if you compare that to the GDP, which is the actual economic growth. Perhaps you ask me, then with this reading at 182%, do I think that the stock market is going to crash or whether it's going to crash soon? I'm not sure, but my gut feel is that no, it is not yet. While it is at 182%, it is still not at that plus two standard deviation. That's number one. Number two, what I always seen in the various crash that I went through is that there must be a lot of exuberant, meaning that the market must get so hot that a lot of money starts to flow in. Not only the big caps are moving, we see also the small caps are moving as well. So what I want to see is that I want to see another huge search up for the big caps and as well as a huge search for the small caps also. And I've not seen the huge search coming in for the small cap yet. I've not seen also a lot of people going into the stock market. People are still a little bit more fearful at this moment, thinking that there will be a stock market crash. I want to know that people are totally complacent. And when I know that people are totally complacent, then I think that there is a high chance for the stock market to correct. I won't use the word crash yet because I've not seen all these factors coming in, but I would be looking at very strongly what happened during the market for the October, November and December period because these would be the period where when it's least expected then it's likely to happen. Have you clicked the subscribe button and how about a like?